I remember one of the guards, Dorothea Binns, walking through the camp. I can still see her before my eyes. The day when an exhausted prisoner passed by her, stumbled, and fell is etched in my memory. With great effort, she got up and staggered away. Such a scene was enough for Dorothea, who called the dogs and set them upon the helpless inmate. They were wild, fierce beasts, trained specifically to tear apart the victim until they ceased to breathe. This is the testimony of Olga Golovina, a survivor of Ravensbrück, a concentration camp notable for being exclusively for women. Here, the female guards had free reign to indulge their darkest impulses. The result was an array of aberrant tortures, ranging from simple yet forceful beatings to dismemberment with axes. Eventually, the bloodbath came to an end with the conclusion of the Second World War, and those responsible for the atrocities received their just punishment. Today, in this new episode of Military History, we will tell you all about the executions of the Guards of Ravensbrück. Ravensbrück began official operations in May 1939. Its construction was ordered by Heinrich Himmler, the leader of the SS, to have a place to house the female population. The camp was located in northern Germany, just 90 kilometers from the city of Berlin. Initially, around 2,000 women accused of opposing Hitler's regime were imprisoned there, among whom was a group of 50 Jehovah's Witnesses. They had been arrested for distributing propaganda, claiming that the Fuhrer was the incarnation of the Antichrist. Their audacity had cost them their freedom. Other prisoners included communists and former members of the Reichstag, the German parliament, although not only political enemies of Nazism were taken there. Prostitutes, gypsies, criminals, and homosexuals were also considered dangerous to German society and therefore were sent to the camp. The population of the facility increased to the point that just eight months after the start of the Second World War, its maximum capacity had already been exceeded. The inmates lived crowded in dirty barracks, dressed in rags, starved and ravaged by diseases. So let's hear the testimony of Anise Postvenet, who was sent to Ravensbrück for being part of the French resistance. She remembers her first impression upon entering the site. Seeing those disfigured gray women with vacant stares scared us. Suddenly, we felt that we were entering a zone of death. On the other hand, the site was notable for the fact that there were 150 female guards whose job was to supervise the inmates and ensure that they maintained order. Like in other concentration camps, the guards were trained to rid themselves of their feelings. They had to harden their hearts and see the prisoners as beasts to whom no mercy should be shown. A survivor of the camp describes it this way. They didn't shoot the women. Instead, they aimed to make us die of sorrow, hunger, and exhaustion. When we arrived at Ravensbrook, the first thing I saw was a cart full of stacked corpses. Their arms and legs hung outward, and they had their eyes and mouths open in a grimace of horror. They dehumanized us. We felt that even cattle had more value than us. The guards were not only complicit in everything that happened there, but often directly responsible for the abuses. One of the most hated was Emma Zimmer, who began working in the camp in 1939, shortly after its opening. She was one of those responsible for selecting the women who would go to the gas chambers, which made her the target of hatred from the inmates. A survivor remembers her as follows. She was a wicked old SS accustomed to frightening us with her threats. With her sadistic tone of voice, she would say things like, for example, I will report you and then you will go far away. Do you know where? You will be ash in the chimney. We feared her and at the same time detested her. Another guard was Greta Boozel, known for her absolute lack of empathy with the prisoners. On one occasion, she was heard saying the following, if any of the prisoners are too tired to work, they should be sent to rot. Interestingly, she had studied to be a nurse and help others, but fate led her to work in a concentration camp where her task was to prepare women to die poisoned with the lethal gas Zyklon B. However, the most hated guard in Ravensbrück was Dorothea Benz, a woman whose cruelty exceeded all imaginable limits. She entered the camp for the first time in 1939 after volunteering to work in the kitchen. 
At that time, she was 21 years old, and no one suspected that a young woman with such an innocent appearance would become a true monster. In late summer 1940, she was promoted to the position of subdirector of a cell block, which meant that the inmates were at her disposal. It was at that moment that she unleashed her cruelest side and acquired the taste for savagely beating the prisoners until they were on the brink of death. In 1944, her inhumanity was rewarded with a new promotion, this time to the position of Oberaufseherin, meaning chief supervisor of the concentration camp. Her power was absolute, and although she had other direct superiors she had to obey, the truth is that she was allowed to do as she pleased. Dorothea would inspect the prisoners twice a day. The women had to line up in the courtyard for hours without being able to move, regardless of whether it was sweltering hot, bitterly cold, pouring rain, or they were exhausted from hunger. They couldn't speak, sit, look at each other, and certainly not gaze upon the guards. The process lasted a couple of hours until every inmate had been called by name to confirm their presence and prove that none had escaped. The photograph you are currently seeing shows Dorothea in her work uniform, standing next to her gigantic German Shepherd. The dog was trained to attack at the signal of the supervisor, something that, as we saw at the beginning of the video, happened frequently. Bins had little patience for those who broke the rules no matter how insignificant the infraction. A woman with improperly fastened clothes, or who accidentally dropped a crust of bread to the ground, could receive dozens of lashes as punishment. Dorothea used to walk with a whip in one hand scanning the prisoners from head to toe, looking for any excuse to strike them. Next, we will hear the testimony of Dagmar Hykova, a Czech survivor of Ravensbrück, who witnessed one of the supervisor's most brutal crimes. Dorothea noticed a woman she thought wasn't working hard enough. She approached her and slapped her to the ground. Then she took an axe and started hacking at the inmate until her lifeless body was nothing but a bloody mass. When she finished, Dorothea wiped her shiny boots with a dry piece of the corpse's skirt. She mounted her bicycle and pedaled back to her quarters unhurriedly as if nothing had happened. The guards continued to behave like angels of death throughout the war, although their reign of terror was approaching its catastrophic end. In the spring of 1945, as the Third Reich was cornered, the Red Army of the Soviet Union launched a sweeping advance into German territory. On April 30th of that year, they reached Ravensbrück and liberated the 3,000 survivors who were still imprisoned there. In the following weeks, the camp guards were identified and arrested by the Allies. Immediately, a trial against them began. Evidence of their crimes was collected, and witnesses who could testify to the abuses were sought. Greta Bosel and Emma Zimmer, whom we mentioned earlier, were found guilty of committing war crimes related to the mistreatment of prisoners. They were executed by hanging on May 3, 1947, and September 20, 1948, respectively. The fate of Dorothea Binz, the all-powerful supervisor of the concentration camp, would not be much different. In April 1945, upon learning that the Soviets were approaching her position, she decided to escape on her own. She was aware that if the Russians caught her, she could consider herself dead, so she risked everything in a desperate escape. She only made it to Hamburg, where she was quickly identified by a patrol of the British Army and taken into custody. The trial against Dorothea and other officers of Ravensbrück lasted two years, and in the end, the former supervisor was sentenced to death by hanging. What you are seeing now is the filmed record of the moment when the accused heard their final sentence. There, identified with a sign bearing the number five was Binz. In April 1947, while awaiting death, Dorothea attempted suicide by cutting her veins. However, she was saved by the guards who intervened just in time to prevent her from escaping justice. On May 2nd of that year, she was led to the gallows, where she was forced to stand on the trap door. A black hood was placed over her face and the noose was tightened around her neck. Then, the executioner activated the mechanism, Dorothea Binns fell through the hole, and her neck broke instantly. Thus, the story of the torturers of Ravensbrück reached its grim conclusion. We have reached the end of the video. 
please leave your comments in the comments section below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel to learn about many more military events that have left their mark on history.